Oh, activated charcoal. We can definitely use that. One time I was bitten by a snake. I was teasing it and it had a, it had a toad and it, I was teasing it and it threw up the toad and I kept on teasing it and then it bit me. And then uh, we put a charcoal porpoise on. It wasn't a poisonous snake, but we thought it might have a risk of infection. So uh, we used charcoal. <clears throat> Yes, so this is a, a cast iron griddle. Uh, when we make our toast or make pancakes on the stove, wood stove there. Um, so this is nice when we're cooking for more people, then we have more space to uh, make toast or pancakes. I am so grateful to the Lord for leading us to find your videos. Jesus shines brightly within you, Titus. All praise and glory be to our Father in heaven in the mighty name of Jesus. From Washington State, Andrea Hild. Thank you, Andrea. Yes, this griddle will definitely be put to use. And the charcoal will definitely be used as well. Wow, <laughs> more cashews. <laughs> Yes. You've been blowing through those like crazy. Yep, yep. The, everybody here, it seems like all the volunteers like to eat cashews. We eat pumpkin pretty much every single day, and we put the cashew nuts on them or almonds on them or some kind of nuts and then put some maple syrup on it or honey. And... Okay, more stainless steel bowls. And more... <clears throat> Of the Lara bars. Oh yes, Lonzo, are you ready for one? <laughs> Lonzo has been cutting firewood today. He uh, slipped on the ice and broke this bone right here, and uh, he's been wearing a splint. But he's been splitting firewood, and he'll take the splitting maul like this and go. Oh, and he can split wood with one arm better than a lot of people can split with two. It's amazing what he can do with one good hand. Mm -hmm. And his other one will heal up, but it'll take a little while. Oh wow, more maple syrup. <laughs> yeah, that goes fast too. Yes, it does. Oh, more of the... Uh, Maple syrup candies. You ready for one? <laughs> catch it. Catch, catch, it. catch it. Think fast. Up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> try again. Try again. I caught it. Yeah, I caught you catching this. <laughs> Hey, you're welcome. You want uh, you want one of these Lara bars too? This one will be easier to catch. Not before bed. Okay. <laughs> Tomorrow though, definitely. Yeah. Whoops. Oh wow, more Lara bars. This one is the almond one. It has almonds, dates, apples, sea salt, almond extract. Yeah. And then these uh, magnetic, uh, kind of like, kind of like, they're kind of like Legos, but they're magnetic and you can build little houses. And uh, yes, the children have been enjoying these. Mm -hmm. okay. You need another one? 
I don't know if you need another one, but I know you want another one. They are so sweet. I'm like, Man. no way. Whoever made them did a good job. <laughs> it tastes like eating a spoonful of maple syrup. May Jesus continue to bless you from Andrea Heald. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. We are very blessed here while we're working here, volunteers. It's amazing how so much delicious food. Hmm. Gabriel's Relief, targeting life's pains. Shake well before using. Hmm. Wintergreen, Arnica, Myrrh, Hellscrum, Black Cumin, Juniper Berry, Clove Bud, Turmeric, Geranium, Majorium, black pepper, frankincense, ginger, lavender, pine scotch, rosemary, antox, chamomile, blue, jojoba oil, fractionated coconut oil. Hmm. Are you in pain? Uh, no. Mmm, that smells good. <clears throat> Woo, it smells good. Yeah. You want to smell it? You got it. You'll catch it. Good catch. <clears throat> mm, smells good. Hello, Titus. I came across a video of you on YouTube, and I must say it was a blessing. You mentioned you broke both your feet years ago, and at times you deal with pain issues. I developed this liniment about four years ago, and I believe it will help you significantly. I'm a man of faith, and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for our Savior, Jesus Christ. Just like many of us, I believe in prayer, and my prayers go out to you and your family. Gabriel's Relief was developed after months of research, and the formula was from a dream I had. Hmm. I hope it is a blessing to you as it has been for many. Thank you, Eric. Rubush, Rapid City, South Dakota. Thank you, Eric. Yes. Oh, wow. Lots of markers. Oh, these are nice for like highlighting in your Bible. Precious promises that stand out to you. Oh, okay, well, there's... A wider tip and a narrower tip. Wow. So many different colors. <whistles> Bless you and all those around you and everything you do. From Theo, Joe, and Nina. Thank you. Thank you so much. This will uh, be a useful tool as we study the Word of God. Yes. Mark the precious promises in your Bible. Those verses that, that really stand out to you and speak to you. And then when you're in trouble and you're in distress, you open your word and it will open to those that you've marked. I have this Bible that I've done a lot of marking in, little notes. And when I open this one, it just seems like it will jump out at me. But other Bibles that I have that are completely unmarked, it just seems like it doesn't doesn't speak to me so much, and um, I guess it's kind of like, you know, if you're using a knife every day, it's just you learn to work with this one, and then if you get another one, it just doesn't quite work as well. You're not used to it, you know. So, yeah, mark your Bible. <clears throat> wow, a whole gallon of maple syrup. So, Lonzo, it says that the serving size is four teaspoons. <laughs> we'll have to measure that out. <laughs> wow. Grade A. Wow. Uh, it's not going to have a chance to be processed. It, it, it'll... Yes. Yeah. 
Hello all, as we are learning about trees, this nectar from God should come in handy. Thank you for sharing your wisdom and grace with us from Tara. Thank you, Tara. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, we have a bucket of lentils. Stephanie's been making a soup with lentils and potatoes from our garden and carrots and bay leaves for seasoning and some salt. And I think you put garlic in there. What else do you put in there? Onion and turnips. Onion and turnips, yes. Turnips. The turnips are the are the like the, the key ingredient. Stephanie says no they're not. She doesn't like turnips, but she, after she eats them long enough, she only started eating turnips the last little like this year, right? Well, I ate them at your parents' house like years ago. Yeah. yeah. But so they're growing on her. One day she'll like them a lot better than she does now. <laughs> but she eats them because they're healthy. <clears throat> She's setting a good example for her girls and other people that might be inclined to be picky. Oh, more of the uh, big bars. So we were almost out of these and then here's some more. You want one more, Laundra? Thank you. You're welcome. Oh, wow. More activated charcoal. No name with this one. So whoever you are that sent this, thank you very much. Thank you. Aha. Uh -huh. Another one of the Mora knives. This spring and summer, I can envision a, quite a large group uh, coming to do wilderness survival skills and learning these skills. So it would be a blessing to have this one and the other ones that have been sent for our classes to give young people and old people and everybody in between, anyone that wants to, a chance to sharpen their skills, learning to use the knife to make things. One of these days we're going to have a class on uh, starting a fire with a bow drill. And definitely you can, you can make your set with one of these knives. Ah, looks like we have some books. Oh, from Canada. Okay. Yep. All right. Have the book Steps to Christ. And then we have the Great Controversy. <clears throat> From F. Heaven. From Calgary, Canada. Wow. Oh, thank you, Stanley. Thank you, Jeff, for the lentils. We are grateful. Plant protein to keep us strong, build our muscles and our bones. Oh, wow. Yeah, it has the tabs for making it easier for to find the... Uh, Books has a nice binding too. It says, Give the Bible as you are led. Blessings. And it says, Mr. 
and Mrs. Anonymous, <laughs> Ozark, Missouri. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a beautiful Bible. Wow. Wow. It has Psalm chapter 119 and verses 105 printed in the front. <clears throat> Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Wow, blueberries. Dried blueberries. Is that alive enough to oatmeal? Yes. Yes. Sweeten it up and extra nutrition and dried mango. Wow. Beautiful. And these uh, cans are a blessing too because uh, if, if you have a dry time in your garden, you can take a nail and poke a hole or two in the bottom and then you fill this up and it just goes drip, drip, drip and it doesn't just run off where it can dry out and evaporate. And uh, so excellent, you know, if you have a garden or some plants, these cans are perfect. You, you can use like the plastic, like a milk jug or uh, those plastic ones, but then the wind tends to like knock them over and they can bl blow around and things. But these tin cans are, are best for that. They're ideal. Hi, Titus. Just found you on YouTube and wish you were closer to break bread. If you ever come to Hudson or Tampa for fun, let me know. You are a calming and Christ-loving influence on me and many others. Thanks from Chris Engel in Florida. Thank you, Chris. Yes. Oh, wow. Okay. <clears throat> Titus, my son has enjoyed and been inspired by watching what you do. He asked me to mail you this Book of Mormon as he left for his mission in Liberia for two years for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Have a blessed day. I think this is the fourth uh, Book of Mormon that has been, that have been sent me. Yes, I, I have read some of the Book of Mormon. Uh, I uh, can't say that I believe that it is a book that is inspired or that is uh, a guiding light for us today, but the uh, Bible does say to test all things so we can read the Word of God, the King James Version, and then we can compare this with the Bible and see whether the two line up. <clears throat> Understanding the Body Organs and the Eight Laws of Health. This is an excellent book. I think this is the third one that has been sent. And so I can see how um, our Father in Heaven is orchestrating this so that we can have copies that people can look at while we have a class and while we study these principles together. So we would like to do more medical missionary, more um, along that line in the, as time goes on. The Law of Life by Mark Sandoval. I have uh, listened to Brother Mark's uh, teaching, and I appreciate him. He's has been helping a lot of people, and I'll be glad to read that one when I get a chance. Dear Titus, I hope you are able to get a lot of use out of the accompanying books that I purchased for you and your church family off of your Amazon wish list account on your YouTube channel. The Sabbath meetings and the simplicity of your life has been a blessing to my walk with Jesus. Thank you from Sandy Wheaton. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. One World Church. The Whore of Revelation <clears throat> Revealed. 
it's a study of Revelation chapter 17. Revelation 17 verse 1, And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Yes, Revelation 17 is definitely a chapter in God's word that we need to study, we need to know, we need to understand. It definitely applies to <coughs> us today. This material uh, comes from Mr. Gary. Mr. Gary Smith from Artesia, New Mexico. Thank you, Gary. Yes, uh, definitely uh, plan to study this and look into it. Okay. Um, this man walked across Kentucky, um, and I believe that's a picture where he was walking across through Kentucky carrying a cross. Hmm, the life of Ellen White, illustrated. Oh, okay, a lot of history here. Hello, brother. I hope this letter and package finds you well, both, both spiritually and physically. I wanted to send you a few dollars to support building the new chapel or whatever you need. And I wanted to share some things with you that I found out that you may be interested in. I base my faith 100% on the King James Bible as you and I have discussed before. If what we believe to be the truth is in fact the truth, then it will stand in the face of the scrutiny of its opponents. We should never be afraid to examine what we, we believe through the eyes of its opponents. In doing so, our belief in the truth is either made stronger or error in what we believe is exposed. If truth is what we are after, this process should be a welcomed one. I present to you evidence opposing the divine origin of Ellen White's writings. There's a lot of information to look at and it's not just a single issue. I became aware of a lot of double-minded statements when I was doing research for the paper that I wrote on the nature of Christ while he was on earth during the Incarnation. I included a copy of this paper for your review. It led me to examine the writings of H. E. Carver, D. M. Cantwright, and Walter T. Ray. There was also a book defending D. M. Cantwright entitled The Case of D. M. Cantwright, Seventh-day Adventist Charges Examined by Norman F. Doughty written in 1964. I've always said that when a person or institution attacks another person's character, instead of being able to refute what that person has stated to be true, then what that person said is likely true. Defaming someone's character is the last line of defense in refuting what someone states to be truth when you oppose it. If you can't refute what they say, then you make them look like an untru untrustworthy source of information. This is how D.M. Cantwright was treated when he came out opposing the divine inspiration of E.G. White. They were never able to refute what he said to be true. They just attacked his character. The Seventh-day Adventist Church or the White Estate have never su successfully defended themselves against the charges that were brought to view by Dudley M. Cantwright. Just to put things into perspective, Kant Wright wasn't just a run-of-the-mill layperson. He was in the top three of leadership of the denomination. He worked directly with James and Ellen White, which I think gives him unique perspective on the truth. Of the writings I'm sending you, Kant Wright's book is the most important to read. I hope you take the time to read it, and not only that, but to research and verify his statements as I have done. All his claims are verifiable. I have also included the statements made by H.E. Carver and the transcript downloaded directly from Adventist archives from the 1919 Bible Conference where church leadership discussed the inspiration of the Bible 
versus the inspiration of the spirit of prophecy. It was truly eye-opening. I hope you take the time to read the material and judge for yourself. I would love to discuss these things with you and also would love to hear your thought on the research I did on the nature of Christ while on earth during the Incarnation. I have a feeling you are straightforward as I am and take scripture as it reads. For me, the truth is more important than anything, especially the truth regarding God and what He expects of us and how to have a better relationship with Him and a better understanding of Him. We are such infinitely small beings in comparison to the Almighty and have such little understanding of infinite things. My hope is to understand the things that God has revealed and to be able to share them with others. Part of that is to expose error when I see it and stand for the truth. God's blessing, Trevor Jacobs, Pipe Creek, Texas. I've never heard of this. What are you talking about? Oh, I've heard of D.M. Cantwright. Have you? Oh, yeah. Uh, I've never heard I've of read, he, he wrote, uh, like, against uh, Ellen White. And um, then Walter Ray um, kind of took D.M. Cantwright's materials and just ran with it later. Walter Ray lived in like the 1960s or something in that time frame. Oh, yeah. I mean, it might not be good for you to eat three of them, but. We were instituting a one per day rule. I think this came from France. Or no. Um, this one comes from Helen. Helen Chris. Yes. This card is sent from the UK with so much thanks and love. YouTube channels bring me so much comfort and joy and help me through the difficult times in my life. You are my favorite man on planet Earth. God bless you. <laughs> love you so much. Your heart and soul is beautiful. Love from Helen Crisp. Thanks for reading out my precious letter. It was very kind of you. Love your beautiful dogs. Uh, you want to read yours? No. Thank you, Helen. Yes, thank you, Helen. Aha! Uh -huh. Dried strawberries. More toppings for oatmeal? Yes. Ooh. A case knife. This is what they call a Stockman pattern. The Stockman pattern uh, has this this blade that's good for castration and then uh, yes. This is an excellent knife for farmers. Dear Titus, you have inspired me. God bless you from Jeff and family. Yes. I, when I was young, I would... Um, take my pocket knife and we didn't have video games or TV and so I would whittle and whittle and whittle and whittle and carve and then um, if I was misbehaving or needed some uh, disciplinary connect, uh, correction um, one of mom's um, see I would rather have like five spankings in, in a day rather than to have my pocket knife taken away but uh, if needed if I needed the punishment mom would one of the punishments was taking away my pocket knife and that was just so sad and I would just be so eager for the time when I could have it back so, I still like whittling a lot and some Advil which is something I don't use. I've never taken ibuprofen, but I do appreciate the kindness.
time thought. The, the, the fever is the body's natural effort to, by heating up the temperature, to kill the bacteria or the virus. So when you are taking some kind of pill to lower your fever, you're actually working against your body's defense action that it's taking. So you're actually working against your body. So it is important if your fever is really high that you put like maybe a cool cloth on your head or you know have a bucket of ice water with a rag in it and you can switch out the rags to keep your head cool. Um, like if it goes past like 104 or above, you re it's really, really important to keep your head cool because um, you don't want to have brain damage. Um, but um, it's just not a good idea to take anything to bring your fever down. You want your fever to come up, kill the virus, kill the bacteria, and then you're good. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I had a, I had some cavities, and then they were starting to be sensitive. My friend told me, oh, you've got to get those filled or they're going to get worse. And then another friend, my friend Mary, she's like, well, I had a cavity. And then my dentist looked at it and said, oh, you got a cavity. And then she started, she said that she started eating lots of raw comfrey, like in salad, lots of kale and lots of dark leafy greens. And then she went back to the dentist and the dentist said, your, your cavity has filled up. So the standard medical books will tell you that once the enamel is gone, it never regenerates. Uh, however, if you put enough nutrition in your body, your enamel can regenerate. So I thought, well, I don't want to go spend the money to have a, a dentist. So I started eating lots of comfrey, lots of kale. That's been about maybe two years ago or so. And then as I started doing that, then my teeth stopped being sensitive. And I could feel with my tongue and see that, okay, they're starting to kind of fill up again. Um, but then uh, about maybe two months ago, uh, I, one of my cavities just got deeper and then it was starting to hurt. And I looked in the mirror and you could see like the, the pink pulp down there. And I was in so much pain, like there was tears coming out of my eyes and I wanted to lay down and, and rest and sleep, but I couldn't sleep. It was so much painful. And so I, I thought, well, you know, I've been telling people about how the comfrey and the kale works. And then if I go into the dentist, it's like I'm, people are going to be like, oh, well, it doesn't really work anyway. And so I said, I asked one of my volunteers, Zach, to please pray for me, Zach. I, I have this pain and this cavity. And so he prayed for me and then I prayed. And I said, Father in heaven, please heal this cavity. I please, um, I, I, and I ask in Jesus' name. And then I, I heard the Holy Spirit speaking to me and saying, Titus, you will be healed. And it, when I heard that from the Holy Spirit, it wasn't immediately healed. But then the next day, the pain was gone. And it has not come back. And I feel with my tongue and I look in the mirror and I can't see that pink pulp anymore. Uh, it's filling up and I'm having no pain. Um, one thing that we've been doing is picking kale and turnip greens from the field here and we've been um, blending them up with like grapefruit, apples, bananas, oranges, blending it all together and sometimes it's hard to chew, you know, it just takes so much time to chew that raw kale. Um, but you can put it in the blender and blend it up and then drink it yeah. and it's uh, delicious and nutritious and it will help your teeth to regenerate. Okay, I think um,
Titus, with these you can heat some water up on the stove and take a nice hot shower. Sent a couple extra for the volunteers. It'll hit the spot after working all day. God's blessings from Trevor Jacobs from Pipe Creek, Texas. Thank you, Trevor. You fill them up with hot water or on a hot day you can put water in it and hang it up in the sun. Or you know, because it's black, the water will heat up a little bit, and then you can have a warm shower. Yes, all right. Thank you. Oh, okay, yes, more of the uh, flint strikers. For wilderness survival classes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> they work <laughs> yes they're a, a ferrous rod your lighter might um, break on you or right run out of fluid but uh you have some of these they're definitely worth taking with you and having on hand for a wilderness survival situation or keeping your vehicle in case somehow you were stranded see there's i believe there's 10 of these so we can uh, have one for everybody that comes to class for a wilderness survival class. And there's also a couple of knife sharpeners here. Whoever sent these uh, fire starters and sharpeners, thank you. Oh, more maple cream. Wow. Hey, Titus sending three items, the mango too. Blessings on your house, friend. Please pray for me and mine, and we will do the same for yours. Please endure, brother. God loves you. Praise unto him. From Chris in Hudson, Florida. Thank you, Chris. Okay, I think that is everything. I'd like to share a song with you. Let me grab it real quick. <clears throat> Though I did not possess a talent with words, I prayed that I would do my best, and God has heard. He purged my lips with a fiery coal and asked if he sent me would I go. Here I am, Lord, send me. I'll be brave as I follow thee. Here I am. Lord, send me, I'll be brave as I follow Thee. Here I am, Lord, send me, in me only You, may Your children see. Though I had a heart of stone, you taught me to love. He said it is what his gold was made of. He took 
out my stone and replaced it with flesh, stirred my compassion all afresh. Here I am, Lord, send me. I'll be brave as I follow thee. Here I am, Lord, send me. I'll be brave as I follow thee. Here I am, Lord, send me. In me only you, may your children see. There's nothing that I can do without you. I'm only an instrument your hands work through. So take my heart, if for it is yours. You're in control of this, I'm sure. Here I am, Lord, send me. I'll be brave as I follow thee. Here I am, Lord, send me. In me only you, may your children see. The one that stands out to me most is verse 3. There's nothing that I can do without you. I'm only an instrument your hands work through. So take my heart, for it is yours. You're in control of this, I'm sure. We've been going through a really hard time, a really hard situation. Um, and Stephanie's been facing some legal issues and um, we can't really talk about it right now, but uh, eventually you'll know. And we've been hurting and we've, it's been hard. This song has really spoken to me. There's really nothing we can do without our Father in Heaven. We're only the instruments that His hands work through. So we just have to give Him our heart and remember He's in control of this. He's in control of this situation and we trust that He will do best for those involved, for the children involved. He will overrule whatever the judge has said for His honor and glory and for the best interest of the children. So please pray for us in this time. Um, Satan is opposing this ministry uh, and there is someone who is speaking untruths and legally bringing legal action against Stephanie and it's, uh, it's hard to deal with. Um, but we know that through this fire, our Father in Heaven is refining the gold. He's burning away the dross. He's burning away the imperfections. We're learning to trust Him more. We're learning to depend on Him more. We're learning to wait on His timing. We're learning that our Father in Heaven gives His best to those that leave the choice with Him. And we know that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord and to those that are called according to His purpose. Let's pray. Our Father in Heaven, we are thankful for life and we are grateful for Your blessing. Thank You for these gifts that have been sent. Um, thank You, Father, that You are providing all the needs that are here and you're providing for us so that we can continue working towards building the Henson Creek House of Prayer and 
Father, we miss Rachel and Rebecca so much, and they're not with us right now, but we know that they're in your hand, and you will bring them back in your time, in your way, because nothing is impossible with you. We thank you for this, and we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus. We're asking also that you bless the ones that gave. Bless each one, um, those that gave, those that were not able to give but that are watching. Bless each one of us. Work in our lives. Make us all that you want us to be. We thank you, and we're asking this in the name of your Son, Jesus, Yeshua.